Hello, science students, and welcome to today's lesson about Earth, Moon, and Sun. We're on to our third and final part of this idea, and we're focusing on the concept of seasons. As you probably recall, the relationships between the Earth, Moon, and Sun are responsible for a lot of the things that we see and experience here on Earth. They're responsible for things like the length of our day, the length of our year, the solar eclipses, the lunar eclipses, tides, and then of course today's focus, seasons. As we've been presenting the idea of seasons and I asked students what causes them, there were two common ideas that were put forward. The first is this idea that it relates the, to the position or proximity of Earth in its orbit around the sun. Being closer to the sun causing one season and being farther from the sun causing the other. The other idea that was presented was the tilt of the Earth in relation to the sun when it's tilted towards its one season, when it's tilted away, it's another season. And we're going to explore that first idea first about proximity. So if this is caused by the location in Earth's orbit around the sun, it's important to understand that an orbit is defined as the path that an object follows around the other object. That could be the Earth around the Sun, that could be the path that the Moon takes around the Earth. But an orbit is defined as the path an object follows as it moves around another object. Notice that orbit showed up in our key vocabulary terms. It should be recorded in your notebook. Earth's orbit around the Sun is not a perfect circle. This is one of those things that uh, Copernicus actually was wrong about. He had tons of his information that was correct. He made that wonderful diagram of the sun at the center of his heliocentric universe or heliocentric solar system, and he had the earth and all of the other planets rotating around the sun. But he drew them as perfect circles, and they are not. They're in fact a shape that's called an ellipse. And an ellipse is kind of like a circle, but it's been kind of elongated in some sections and kind of squished in others. So if you look at this diagram in the blue, you can see that you've got a perfect circle. If you start at that point labeled zero on the X and the Y axis, zero, zero, you can see that everywhere around that blue circle is two and a half units away from that zero. Whereas you look at the ellipse in that red color, you can see that along the x-axis, it's elongated to the 3, and it's shortened or squished down to the 2 on the other sides. So this means that there are times when our Earth is closer to the sun in its orbit, and there are times when it's further away from the sun in its orbit. And so if this idea that the location caused the uh, seasons, when we are closer to the sun, it would be summer. And then in the winter, we will be further away from the sun in our orbit. But when we actually study and look at this, we learn that that's not true. The farthest we get from the sun puts us 152 million kilometers away. If the farthest away should be the coldest, we should be in winter at this point in time. But we are 152 million kilometers away on July 4th. July 4th, we are the farthest from the sun as occurs in our orbit. But that's summer. That's warm. That's hot. Where if you're far away from the sun, it should be cold. And also, you'll see that on January 3rd, we are the closest we get to the sun. We're 147 million kilometers away from the sun. So we've gotten 5 million kilometers closer. So if we've gotten closer to the sun, if this idea that our proximity caused our seasons, January should be hot, but that's not what we experience. It's cold in January. It's winter in January. And if you know something about the world, you're probably familiar with the fact that the northern and some southern hemispheres are opposite seasons. So when it's summer in the northern hemisphere, it's winter in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa, winter in the north, summer in the south. Same type of thing with those other seasons like spring or autumn, fall. It's spring in the northern hemisphere as it's fall in the southern hemisphere. And if this idea of being closer and further from the sun causes seasons, it should be summer in both hemispheres at the same time. As we get 5 million kilometers closer to the sun, both the northern and the southern hemisphere should both be in summer. 
But again, that's not what happens. And the same type of thing if you think about the area of our Earth called the tropics. This is that area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. And if our proximity causes seasons, getting closer should cause seasons in the tropics. The tropics are really similar all year round. They don't really have a summer and a winter. Yes, the temperature fluctuates a little bit, but their real differences are rainy and dry seasons and not summer and winter. So all of this helps to support that the proximity, how close we are to the sun, does not cause our seasons. Instead, it's related to the tilt of our Earth. The Earth spins around like a top as it orbits or revolves around the sun. That line that we're spinning around is called the rotation axis. And you notice that word showed up in your key vocabulary. It's defined as the line that an object spins around. Now the Earth's rotation axis is kind of tilted. It's not straight up and down in comparison to our orbit. Instead, it's angled along our orbit. And it's always pointed in the same direction and tilted the same way. In this diagram, you can see over there on the right-hand side, when it's June, that orbit, it's, uh, the axis is tilted up and to the left in this diagram, and it's pointing at the sun, at least the northern hemisphere is pointing at the sun. As we rotate around through till September, you'll see that it's still pointed up and to the left, but now it's kind of straight on. It's neither pointing at nor away from the sun. You continue rotating around till December, and you notice that that axis of rotation is still pointed up and to the left. But now that southern hemisphere is tilted towards the Earth and the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. And finally there, if you look down at March, you see again that rotation axis is neither pointing towards nor away from the sun and the Earth is kind of equal exposure to the sun. And so what happens is as the Earth orbits the sun, one half of the Earth, the northern and the southern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun and the other half is pointed away from the sun. Those areas that are tilted towards the sun receive more light. That light is more intense, it's more direct, it's more straight on, and that creates more thermal energy, more heat. In this diagram, you can see here as that north end of the axis or the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, the northern hemisphere receives a lot less sunlight. There's less of that northern hemisphere in the illuminated half of the Earth at one point in time and the southern hemisphere receives more of the sunlight. And you can see more of that southern hemisphere is lit up in the sunlight. That makes the days longer in the southern hemisphere, shorter in the northern hemisphere. Vice versa, as we rotate or revolve around our orbit 180 degrees, now the northern hemisphere is more in the sunlight. That northern hemisphere or that north axis is tilted towards the sun. We end up with summer in the north, winter in the south, more sunlight, more intense sunlight, more energy, summer in the north. As we are spinning around that orbit, the axis is tilted and it creates longer days with more intense sunlight. Areas that are tilted towards the sun heat up and experience summer. Vice versa, when that axis is tilted away from the sun, there are shorter days, less intense sunlight, and that causes the area to cool down and experience winter. Now the orientation of that axis is constantly changing. Every day we move a little bit further around our revolution, and that causes that axis of rotation to shift more towards or away from the sun, and it's constantly changing. But there are four points around our orbit, or four days out of the year, where it's in a unique and special location. We call two of those days a solstice, and that's when the Earth's rotational axis is either closest to the sun or the farthest from the sun. So it's pointed directly at the sun, the closest it's going to get, or directly away from the sun, the farthest it's going to get. And that kind of depends on whether you're in the north or south hemisphere and if it is the summer or winter solstice. And then the equinox are the other two days, and those are the days where that axis is pointing neither at nor away from that Earth's sunlight. It's kind of in the opposite plane. And you can see that both of these words show up on our key vocabulary terms. Make sure that you get them copied down. 
The solstice is the day when Earth's rotation axis is most toward or most away from the sun, and the equinox are the days when Earth's rotation axis is neither toward nor away. Here you can see the winter solstice. The northern hemisphere is receiving less sunlight. The southern hemisphere is receiving more sunlight. It occurs on December 21st or 22nd, depending on if it's a regular year or leap year, it can alter. And of course, it's sometimes referred to as the December solstice. And that's because it's winter in the northern hemisphere, but summer in the southern hemisphere. And so some people choose to describe it as the December solstice. For our studies here this year, we've been using the terms winter and summer solstice. So when you hear winter solstice, remember that we are talking about winter in the northern hemisphere. Here on the summer solstice, you can see now that the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sunlight. This creates the longest day of the year, the most hours of sunlight, and it occurs on June 20th or 21st, and it is summer in the northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere. We also have those equinoxes. Those are those days where we have an equal amount of sunlight because neither the northern nor the southern hemisphere is tilted towards sunlight. It's not tilted towards nor away from. So both the northern and the southern end up with equal equinox, equal amounts of sunlight. The optimal equinox or fall equinox occurs on September 22nd or 23rd, depending on if it's a leap year. It's autumn in the northern hemisphere or fall because that focus of the sunlight was on the northern hemisphere and has been slowly moving towards the southern hemisphere. At this point in time, it's directly over that equator, but it has been providing less and less energy in the northern hemisphere. Whereas the spring equinox, we've gone 180 degrees through our revolution. And now that sun is again pointing directly on the equator, but this time it's moving from the Southern hemisphere up into the Northern hemisphere, causing more and more direct sunlight to fall on the Northern hemisphere and to cause our spring season. Once again, we have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness all around the world. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this helps you better understand the seasons on Earth.